everybody shut up I'm going live and welcome to another episode of 72 pin connector I am Adam Jordan and I am not Eric fine because Eric is gone today Dead. so we have a replacement <laughs> and he makes Dead. more money than Eric ever made <laughs> we have <laughs> Josh with us today hello how you, you guys see, doing today? Our, our shareholders at 72 Pin Connector uh, really wanted Adam to talk about Resident Evil 7, but he didn't finish it. And in our earnings call, the shareholders demanded blood. They needed someone fired for this gross oversight. So we got rid of Eric. Yes. He's gone for good. Yep. So how you guys doing Never today? Back. How was your week? Good. Good, good week. Good week. I had a pretty swell week. Yeah. My very, week was really easy. Busy. Oh, you were, you're still busy? Uh, it, I am busy, but uh, it's been a good busy and actually right. filled with way more games than I've played in weeks. Nice. Yeah, well, it's, um, nice. it's, it's oh. been a pretty good week. For oh, there it is. He's there showing is. his beautiful <laughs> Nintendo Switch. Yes. So uh, <laughs> I, I apologize to all of this on audio. I finally do have a Nintendo Switch and I can take off the controllers. Oh, what? <laughs> okay, this thing this thing is rad. Uh, I, I love the Switch. It's good. Uh, it works great, just like advertised on the box. Um, when I'm in the middle of Zelda and I'm, like, climbing a mountain, I can take this off of the stand and go to the bathroom with it. This is the Amazing. perfect game console. There's nothing <laughs> else you need. <laughs> That's awesome. Like, online play, cloud saves, who needs it? Bathroom console? Yes. It's very nice. <laughs> Say my bathroom console phone. is my phone. <laughs> yeah, same. Playing a lot of mobile games for through the phone because of that reason. Nice. <laughs> well, why don't you tell us a little bit? What have you been playing, Josh? Um, lately, I, I mean, I went through a a big phase where I was just struggling to find good content. Yeah. I think that was that's the hardest thing when you're going through uh, when you're going through like mobile games. It's just like just wave after wave after wave of. Uh, bad games right now i'm i'm on uh hearthstone which is a blizzard title so that's that's been really fun um it's just a card game uh for the most part i think many people have heard of it know about it it Probably, came out yeah. years ago somewhere <laughs> around 2014 so should we give it some of the more unknown ones that you might be interested in yeah that i thought were a lot of fun um is pixel dungeon I don't Pixel know if Dungeon. you guys is I've not Pixel even heard Dungeon of that. Is amazing. Is it? Oh, is it's, it's, holy shit, it's, it's fantastic. Yes, it's so it's it's a dungeon crawler and it's a lot like Diablo where you start at the top and you work mm. your way down through, you know, through a dungeon, but it's but if you die you're dead and you have to start over. Oh. So, uh it's pretty cool and you can kind of burn through some like a few runs and just you know, thirty minutes if you're trash like me. It's it's great. It's a really <laughs> nice. it's a really good time. <laughs> it is it is a classical rogue like perfectly made for a mobile phone. Uh, and nice. the best part is it's free. Yes, nice and and open source. So there are several different variants. If you want like a hardcore pixel dungeon, you can pull one of those. Uh, if you mm. want something that's easier, they've actually got an easy pixel dungeon that you can pull as well. Very cool. Right. It's re it's really fun. Is, if, it, if is it a free one or is this paid? It's free. It's absolutely free. Yep. It's I'm a, gonna it's have to a look into this. Yeah, you'll you'll definitely like. Oh, when I was playing through it, I didn't make it past like the first dungeon mm -hmm. at the first level. Like I was getting trashed like right away, and then now I'm like down to like the fourth floor, and I'm feeling like a god. But like I look online, <laughs> and people are like, "Oh, I'm down to floor 400, and I don't know what to do now because I'm amazing." Like ah. Uh. <laughs> 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 so nice. um so i i've been dusting off a few other titles for my phone that i've been enjoying super cat brothers is actually a really interesting one if you've super never cat played that brothers one. no yeah i've never heard of this that's great it's it's like as close to mario as you can get um they have a few little like you know pay to win features in it if you but you can play without it and get through all the way through the game and just enjoying it and it's a blast so and the art style is great the sounds great it's just a good mobile game Nice. That you might have not heard of <laughs> I haven't looked too much into a lot of mobile games. Um, I played a little bit of, you know, Angry Birds and stuff a long time ago. I kind of wrote off mobile games because you see all these titles in there that are just obviously pay to win, mm -hmm. you know, cash grabbing. You can continue <laughs> yep. if you spend 
two dollars or you can wait 48 hours to play the game again right so it, it's easy to write off those titles but there's actually some good stuff in the play store and the, the ios store mm-hmm. the issue is it's so hard to find the good stuff like mm-hmm. you know ign right. doesn't write about oh my god here's the latest greatest roguelike game on your phones it's called pixel dungeon you should mm-hmm. absolutely play this right. um most of it is, yeah. You know, most of the time, when I hear about mobile games, it's from some stupid commercial with someone, you know, overly busty showing their cleavage with no <laughs> gameplay in it whatsoever. Right. right? Yeah, the, the commercial right. cannot show the game. That's the rule. <laughs> um, they're like, oh, it's it's great, and you only have to pay three hundred dollars to beat all your friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The uh, unfortunate thing is, is they they're, they do have like. Uh, blogs that show mobile games but they're like they're so like in the corner and mm-hmm. so like just kind of tossed to the side that you never see them on mainstream because there's not really like the indie titles for mobile are great yeah um so there's a lot of really good ones but there's a lot of ones that are like a uh, runner or a flappy bird or <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i mean they did do like they did do a lot of really good ports like grand mm-hmm. theft auto is on mobile now grand theft auto San Andreas. Was really good yeah, yeah and and you can play boulder's gate uh, enhanced edition number two which is amazing and i don't know if you've ever played boulder's gate and actually enjoyed it because no. it's 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 a long read yeah <laughs> if you, yeah if you, <laughs> if you actually played it you know what i mean yeah. um, coming back to it uh it, it's a read and on your mobile phone if you have long 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 commutes it's a good one nice that's, yeah that's i'm cool. gonna have to actually look oh wait i can't anymore I was going to look into it, <laughs> but now I have a full gaming console that I can take with me anywhere and play Mario Kart with my kickstand. <laughs> oh, there dang. you go. <laughs> so is there anything else you've been playing lately, Josh? Any good PC games or anything uh, noteworthy? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I haven't, like you, been playing a lot of Rocket League. Mm. So those, like, That's my main... Always- my main go-tos are, are, are always there, which are, are definitely Rocket League, and now I'm doing a little bit more Hearthstone, but yeah. For Rocket those League. of you playing the 72-pin connector drinking game, you can drink now. <laughs> yes, we've mentioned Rocket League, but it's, it's worth mentioning, especially with Josh here. Uh, I didn't really introduce Josh that well, but Josh is my Rocket League teammate, one of them. Uh, pretty rad dude. But, but is Josh a bad enough dude to save the president? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh-oh. Okay. We're, we're all bad enough dudes. That's from a. What game is that from? Bad dudes. The game is called really? Bad Dudes. The game is called Bad That's Dudes incredible. on the NES. That and sounds it, amazing. It is a shitty, terrible game, <laughs> but I love that screen. Yeah, that's that's one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. So, Tom, that's great. What else have you been playing? I actually. Uh, I'm uh, Josh. I'm glad you brought up mobile games because I have been playing a shit ton of mobile games. Oh, um, let's let's start out with a, a few small ones. <laughs> yeah. um, so Lee Chess, of course, I've been rocking that out on my phone. Nice, um, Adam. I did send you a challenge. Did you? I did. I did not see it. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, I totally sent you a challenge. I need to look at that. Uh, but uh, I've been playing Lee Chess, and oh my god, I just. I'm getting my ass kicked because I'm like, oh, I've got it. I've got him right where I want him. And then he like <laughs> makes like the other guy makes this move and traps me in a corner and kills me in two moves. I'm like, yeah, okay. What is Lee chess for it everyone is, and me? <laughs> <laughs> it is chess. It is open source. It is free. And it's not like, oh, hey, it's a free game and you can pay this money to unlock features. Like it's legit 100% free. It's a great, fantastic chess website. Uh, you don't even have to register to play everything. There are no paid features. Everything is completely free. There's a donate button, but that's it. And you don't have to use it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Android app, also completely free, ties into the website. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's wonderful. It's possibly the best chess website I've yeah. ever seen. The, the coolest okay. part about this for me is the correspondence chess. You don't have to sit down at the same time as somebody else and play chess. You, you know, you do your move oh, whenever okay. you can so, and it sends the notification to the other person on their phone wherever they are on the pc or on their phone they can whenever they get a chance they take their turn and that can go back and forth for upwards of what three days three four days oh yeah. okay so, so it's like I've, uh it's like scrabble with friends or yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. It's exactly. Uh, so 
that's fantastic. So it's just chess. It's chess. So there's yeah. different game modes, or there is it just oh, yeah. chess? Yes. There's there's straight chess. There's um. Let's see here. You've got stuff like atomic, which I love, which is when you capture a piece, it explodes and explodes everything around it. So it makes the game really harrowing because you have to think about taking a piece because you're sacrificing yourself. Hmm. Um. There's tons of different variants. There's uh, nice. I would say nine oh. or ten here. Mm-hmm. Um, so in in my correspondence chess game, I'm playing this guy, and uh, I've got the next. Uh, oh, he's got the next one day and twenty hours to make his next move. If he times out, I win. So it's not like you're stuck uh-huh. unless you want to be stuck. That's hmm. cool. But it's it's really good. It's a wonderful That's awesome. wonderful site. That reminds me a lot of um, there's a like Tetris always has a new Tetris game out there. Yeah, there's one for the PS3 that was uh, that that was just Tetris, and it had a ton of game modes like with all sorts of different. I, it's been so long, but yeah, I love when they add little variances to games that I've loved and spent a lot of time on before. Yeah, it's it's really good. So if you haven't checked it out, LeeChess.org. That's L-I Chess.org. Mm-hmm. It's wonderful. Uh, but that's not the only mobile game I've been playing. I went to my Humble Bundle purchases because I totally forgot, oh my god, I have all these Android games on Humble Bundle that I've never played. Hmm. Uh, so I pulled Super Hexagon, which is the Ooh. simplest, stupidest little game. Have you guys seen this? I've played Super Hexagon. I love and hate Super Hexagon <laughs> so much. So you are a, a triangle on the outside of a hexagon. Okay. And it, there's there's shapes coming in towards you. And if you hit the walls, you die. But there are these openings. So, like, not really in time with a beat, but it's got a killer soundtrack. Yeah. You have to move your, your triangle around, sort of in, like, reverse Tempest style to avoid hitting the walls. Uh, mm-hmm. It's really good. It's a lot of fun, and it's great if you have you know thirty seconds, forty five seconds to kill before you know you move your place in line or you get on a bus or something like that. Oh, yeah. nice. Is that like a like fall down for the TI eighty nine calculators? <laughs> <laughs> that that oh. I do not know. Oh, on the old calculators, they used to have like a whole bunch of little games, and I was always super jealous. This is before I had a Game Boy, mm-hmm. so like everyone, all my friends would be like playing all these really weird games, and uh, one was in Fall Down, and and there was like these walls, and they had little holes, and it would get faster and faster, and like so you'd have to fall down the holes, and you'd go back and forth and try to find the holes. Huh. It's really cool. <laughs> it nice. sounds similar. Um, so and then I I jumped into Little Inferno, which I had played on the PC tried it out on mobile and it's it's the exact same game mm-hmm. uh, i struggle to call it a game there's um it's sort of a parody of mobile weight and purchase games mm-hmm. uh, but it's done it's done pretty well i would not when i bought this at launch i paid 15 bucks because it's by the people who made world of goo it's going to be a great amazing game and it was yeah. kind of <laughs> this shitty little sandbox it's probably worth a couple bucks uh, uh, but not more than that that's unfortunate uh, yeah, wasn't, technically it's it's okay. Now wasn't World of Goo like one of the the big indie titles before yes. indie was a big thing? Yeah, it was really it, good. It yeah, really alongside good. with Braid, right. basically brought in the indie revolution. Because yeah. I remember seeing World of Goo like footage on that indie game, the movie. Yeah, and that yeah, was like I the wish... second game I bought after yeah. the orange box. Like I got I the orange really... box and then straight into World of Goo. <laughs> nice. I really wish they would have got those guys on Indie Game the movie because it's I I love World of Goo. It's got a great soundtrack. The game is good. It's actually mm-hmm. believe it or not, it's got a, a decent story to it as well. Yeah, um, it has a story. I, I, I had no yeah, idea. It, it does have a story. A, a small story. It's not like you know something amazing like this Mass Effect style epic, but it, uh-huh. it does have a good story for you know as short as the game is. Is it um, like a deeper than you sort of thing, like flower? Like, oh, yeah, the world's full kinda. of pollution. Enjoy it's outside more. <laughs> definitely, it's, it's definitely got the the hipster indie pretentious political okay. bend to it. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I love if those. you if you don't care for those games, please stay away. You will hate uh. it. Um, I also played uh, the first couple levels, not a whole lot, of mm-hmm. Mario Run, just Mario to Run. see how it worked. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, and actually. This is shitty, and I'm kind of pissed at Nintendo. Really? See, where is on the brilliant, beautiful <laughs> Nintendo Switch console that I so dearly love? 
I can play this anywhere. I can play it underground. I can play it away from Wi-Fi. I can play it without an internet connection, and they don't give a shit. Mario Run does. So oh. I'm outside my apartment building. I'm in the weird nexus of I can still sort of see my router, but <laughs> far enough away it's not actually connecting to anything. Mm -hmm. But mobile data hasn't kicked in yet. So I'm in the weird nexus, and I'm launching the game, and it's sitting there at the loading screen for... Yeah, 30, 45 seconds. And then it comes back and says, oh, I couldn't connect. Bye. And it shuts oh, the game off. No. Like, what the <laughs> fucking shit, Nintendo? That hey, sucks. Get, get that license. Yeah. I, it's, it's a free fucking game. I haven't even paid the 10 bucks to unlock all the levels. And at this point, I'm not going to. Yeah. It's a good game. Uh, it is fun. It's definitely a mobile game. It's something you can play a little bit of and toss away. Mm -hmm. um, but... I, I I am not paying for something that shackles me like that. There was no fucking way. Oh no! Yeah, I remember we, we covered this a few weeks ago too. Whenever, or not a few weeks ago, whenever it released, it was been a little while. But that was one of the biggest complaints of everybody. Is they said this is actually a pretty cool game. It's pretty fun. You know, it's not a full fledged Mario game, obviously, but for a mobile game, it's it's a good time. But if you can't, if you have to be connected to the internet to play it <laughs> for a game that doesn't have any internet connection functionality does it other right. than maybe no. downloading well, I mean, new levels well, that you buy but there's no bit. like there's multiplayer like, right there's mm -hmm. there's leaderboards and there's like some yeah. stuff with ghosts where you can race against your mm -hmm. friends and there's stupid little stuff like that but it's nothing that absolutely requires an always on connection there is nothing like hard multiplayer about the game it's all very ad hoc multiplayer right um uh, there, there is no technical reason for Nintendo to do this other than, oh my god, piracy. But for fuck's <laughs> right. sake, Nintendo. That's, I mean, that's the way of mobile games, though. It's There's always like, oh, this, I found this game. You guys, I found this game. It's amazing, but... There's always a but. It's like, yeah. but they have to, you have to log in and you have to create this like, you know, 10 hour account making process, but then it's really good. Trust me, it's good. Yeah. You should do it. Or uh, that you should play. It's really good, but just like, it's like 20 bucks in order to like really get the full experience like yeah. cuz you know you're right there but like it just it's worth it just do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm going to run a, a quick start this is this totally live and unscripted. Oh, Look God. at that. We can pull a full APK with stuff unlocked. Yeah, full unlocked download version right there of Mario Run 2.0. Don't ever do that, by the way. Don't side shit on your PC does, does not condone <laughs> Well, not, not only that, right? right? Because piracy is it, just piracy, right? It's, it's a business issue. Arr. But beyond that, like from, <laughs> as an InfoSec guy, when you install shitty APKs from shitty sites like that, you are asking it to get your phone you know, all kinds of jacked up. Just don't do it. It's a bad idea. Um, but yeah, fuck Mario Run. It's, it's a good <laughs> game. But that, it doesn't need to be that way. Mm -hmm. uh, something Adam and I played, um, and I actually I finished it. Uh, I did not finish the expansion, though. I haven't bought that yet. Mm -hmm. Is Monument Valley. Yes. Uh, now, this is a critically acclaimed game that came out some time ago. Um, I'm not entirely sure when, but within the past couple years. Mm -hmm. um, it's a game that was built for mobile platforms, that's it. Not mm -hmm. like, oh, hey, it's World of Goo, and it kind of worked on the PC, so maybe we should do touchscreen interfaces. Oh, look, it really works. Uh, or anything like that. It was built to be a phone game. Um, it's a walking around puzzle game. There's no action to it, but everything about the game just oozes style. Yes, uh, it does. It's, it's beautiful. The graphics are simple and minimalist, but absolutely gorgeous all at the same time the sound design oh my god the sound design uh, everything <laughs> from the music to every little sound effect is perfect and crisp in the way that just brings the whole game together um and it's it's hard to explain without giving away kind of its its core gimmick um mm -hmm. but the imagine, escher -esque aspect of it yeah imagine if mc escher built a video game <laughs> that's kind of what this game is <laughs> Um, like everything from perspective shifting. So there were, there were two platforms and I couldn't, I needed to get from this side of the thing to the other side of the thing and I couldn't do it. So what I had to do is rotate the whole structure until it looked like they were connected because of the perspective. And sure enough, it was connected. So if you can make it look like you can get there, you can get there. That's um, cool. It's wonderful. It's really it, it, wonderful. 
is it the same um is it the same company that made echo chrome for the ps3 that i don't don't know. know that's what i was just about to try to figure out us two is the company the production studio um I do not know if it's that would actually might require some digging because it may have the same director or it may have, you know, there may be something, something there, but echo Chrome for the PS3 is the first time I saw that, uh, that play style and and it's really fun. It's a blast. So this is like a mobile, it looks like a mobile, really high, like really artistic version of echo Chrome. Echo Chrome was kind of dry. There wasn't a lot to it. So monument, I did play some of this too. I didn't finish it. I think I got to like the seventh or eighth level or something. But this is a really polished um, mobile game. I was surprised at how like good it was. Even just the animations, the music, all of it. Um, I actually put headphones on to play this. It was just the, the the speakers of the the phone was not doing the sound justice at all <laughs> yeah it's it's really really good and and i apologize it seems that uh uh someone jumped in our discord channel <laughs> just just to annoy everyone else <laughs> um so actually we're we're gonna take a, a technical break real quick the stream is still gonna go but we're all gonna jump into the 72 pc channel uh just so we don't interrupt anyone else Right. Okay. And Much better. we're back. Much better. Sorry about that. So, Monument Valley actually, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Fez. It's got that sort of, uh, I don't know how to, I don't even know how to describe it, but the, the, the vibe of the game reminds me a lot of Fez. Yeah, definitely. It's It's got this, I... I don't want to say uh, underproduced um, or overproduced, uh, Mm -hmm. but it does feel that way. It's very polished. Everything about the game from the sound design to the graphics to the, even the the menus themselves are perfect in kind of the aesthetic the game wants to bring to the table. It all Uh. fits well together. Um, Because you know how you play some games and it's like, it looks like the menus were slapped on or they're very generic looking. Nothing is generic looking in Monument Valley. Everything looks like it has a place and nothing is extraneous. Uh, Nothing's there just to be showy. It all has a purpose. Nice. Yeah. Um, I was actually, (laughs) this is probably too much information, but as we all know, mobile games are perfect when you're going to the bathroom because, you know, what else do you have to do? (laughs) And the sound design in that game was good enough that I took my headphones into the bathroom with me so that when I played it, I could listen to the music. <laughs> it's really good. And it was actually, it was pretty cheap. Um, yeah. Let me, let me get a price here just, just so we can be totally, totally accurate. Um, uh, it's on iOS and Android. You should totally pick it up. Um, yeah, definitely. It is... It is some amount of money, an amount, some amount. Looks like uh, four dollars on iOS. It's also available uh, on the Amazon App Store, Windows Phone Store, and Samsung Galaxy apps for some reason. Um, but yeah, about four bucks will get you the game, uh, and it's totally worth your time and money. So <laughs> check it out, pick it up. Um, and what else did I play? Oh, uh, a little bit. I guess I have all of these Switch games to talk about, too. Um, I played a little bit of Majora's Mask on the 3DS, um, which is really good. Uh, the game is different than the original. They do a lot of quality of life improvements. Um, and it, it's weird because some of the places that I go to in Majora's Mask, like some of the vendor locations have changed. And it mm-hmm. makes sense. It's better that they do. But from a person who played the original so, so much, it just, it still throws me. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. It kind of feels like a cheap imitation, even though it's a tip. It, it is a, a legitimately better version of the game. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, also, small mention to uh, the mobile game Build a Bridge. Build a Bridge. Um, build a bridge and it's exactly what it sounds like did you guys ever play those bridge games where you make the road and the little wooden things to support the bridge and the truck drives over it and yeah. then it can break and it's like cool physics Absolutely. stuff yeah, yeah those I are great 
Um, okay, so I built a bridge that was just a ramp, and the police car went up and jumped it and actually landed on the other side, and it mm. counts. That was a win condition. It was great. Um, build a bridge uh, style games are great, but this particular one, aptly named Build a Bridge, um, I played it one day and I left it alone because I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. I'll move on to the next mobile game on my list. Uh, it sent me a notification saying, hey, you were doing so good. Why'd you leave? It interrupted me. It sent me a notification oh, no. and dinged my phone. So that got that got uninstalled and one starred very quickly. Don't you dare tell me when I should or should not be playing video games unless I work for a game review company. I will play games when I damn well please. So fuck you, build a bridge, go to hell. <laughs> is that is that one um it's like Polybridge? Like that one I remember I really enjoyed. Uh, mm-hmm. But they keep putting out new content for that one. Uh, Polybridge on Steam. I don't know if you play with that one. No, no, that one's that one's fantastic. That's a really good one. You <laughs> see those? Um, the people put gifts on like Reddit all the time for Polybridge, and it's mm-hmm. super cool. Nice. Um, but I, I know what you guys really want to hear about. Uh, <laughs> let's let's talk about some Switch games. Uh, so first off, the biggest Switch game, the one everyone's been talking about, uh, the one that's gotten perfect scores across the board and really is going to be the game to beat for years and years, probably the decade. Uh, right. I'm talking about Bomberman R. <laughs> now, wow. Okay. Bomberman R. Okay, Tom. Uh, I see. It, I see how it is. It, yeah. It, it kind of, it's not bad. Their update did fix a lot of the control issues. It wasn't as bad as when I first played it, but it's still not a great game. Mm-hmm. I didn't get to any of the story mode stuff because it's a Bomberman game. Who cares? Yeah. Um, but uh, the battle mode is still the battle mode. And yeah, yeah, it's just that's about it. Um, I, I did play uh, Mario Kart 8, which is fucking awesome, and definitely the best version of Mario Kart I've ever played. Yeah. Uh, and frustrating in... I love Mario Kart 8. I, I played it on um, the Wii U, and mm-hmm. I don't know how it is on the um, the Switch. I'm sure it's pretty similar, but... It's man. the exact same game. There's oh, nothing great. different, except you get all the DLC front-loaded. Oh, oh, great. Yeah, I thought they made the, changes. Uh, they if added, they have, I haven't seen too many big differences. Hmm. They added um, a bunch of uh, new content, like the uh, what's the Squid Ink game? Um, Splatoon. They oh, added Splatoon. Splatoon. Oh. Yes. They added like Splatoon content and mm-hmm. a couple other things. But uh, it's been a while since I've even dusted off my Mario Kart Eight. So, so yeah. Oh, uh, quick question about Mario Kart R is or M- Mario Kart R, Bomberman R. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, holding on. Um, Bomberman R, is that um, online multiplayer? Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't because think I have that would be amazing. I'm Zelda in here right now. Mm. Because as um, much as I love multiplayer games, uh, there's been like this influx of uh, of like couch co op games that don't have a multiplayer con uh, like thing on the side. Mm-hmm. So, uh, for instance, like I've been playing um, like Crawl. For instance, I got it on PC first, mm-hmm. and it doesn't have a multiplayer portion of it. So that at least you can't go online and group up with you. But it's it's a four player game. The other three have to. Be, uh, be AI and you have oh, to just okay. do that I don't know oh. if uh, everyone has played Crawl or everyone no. listening I've it, heard has played it. Crawl Crawl is an asymmetrical dungeon crawler so you just start from Ooh. the so you start from the bottom and you work your way down the whole point of it though is that you want to beat the final boss at the end mm-hmm. so you play as uh, in, you play as one of these ghosts or this guy right So you're the hero that's trying to climb down, but your friends that are playing, supposedly playing with you are there to stop you. And if they kill you, they, they absorb your body. You become a ghost. And now that guy's the hero trying to crawl to the bottom. Nice. And it's not fun by yourself, (laughs) but I do um, a weekly game night here at my house every Monday and we do board games and we do, um, and we do sometimes we do some video games mm-hmm. and we got a chance to play crawl on a couch co-op situation nice and it was amazing it was it good everything i thought it would be so there's a few aspects of it that i didn't 
understand getting into it. And that is if you're the hero and you're doing really well, every time you level up, the ghosts level up separately. Oh, so the ghosts actually get stronger and stronger and stronger as they go through it. Like, so like if you're just kicking butt as the hero, the ghosts can level up their, their demons that spawn and you know, they can get stronger and stronger and stronger too. So eventually they'll overtake you and then they have to be, and then you're the hero and then you have to start leveling up and getting stronger. So it has a balance and it's actually a really good balance. That's a great idea. There's a lot of content to unlock. Um, and it's really good. And the boss, you control the boss as the ghosts. So it's not like, so I, there was never a time when like I wasn't the hero that I was like bummed that I wasn't the hero. It was yeah. just like cool <laughs> crawl to the bottom. And nice. Yeah. It's really good. And apparently you only get three chances at the boss. So, mm. so if you go, you die, you don't get to go again. <laughs> wow. So, but yeah, it's really, it's a really good one. I, I don't know. Have you guys played much of that one? No, I don't no, play any of it. Um, Brian, a friend of mine, Maldini, as you know him, uh, <laughs> yes. he, he's, pl- he's played a lot of that, and he was telling me about it, and he showed it to me a little bit one day, but I never really did get a chance to play it. That's that's my point. That exactly. is yeah. It's amazing, but there's no online portion of it. It would be uh, so good if we can all queue up and hop on Discord like we do and play a game like that, because it's... Yeah. It's the nerdy. It's like the nerdiest game with like stat building, and I was like, you know, and it's great. It's perfect mm-hmm. for us, but it just doesn't have a multiplayer feature. A lot like the other one that we play mm-hmm. quite often, and it's called Overcooked. Have any of you played Overcooked? Yes, God damn we, yes. We played Overcooked so at good. Tom's place when Eric was in town for like seven hours or something yeah, strange like, it that, was just, it's, that was such it's a good game so good it is the worst game i've ever played by yourself <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, can, you, I can only imagine apart from like mace griffin bounty hunter okay like this game was absolutely the worst like when you're going in there and you're trying to like operate two because they don't they don't give you one character just like do all the tasks like oh go for it you still have to play two characters in that game and it's just and so like you're switching off and you're like oh i'm gonna run over here and do this and then you have this guy like just standing there with his thumb up his butt as you like (laughs) run around and like hope to do the rest of it and um but that is a an amazing game that we've been doing couch co-op and Mm. every time people come over that's like the last game we play because we do the board game night but at some point, someone's going to say, let's, let's do some overcooked. Let's do some overcooked. And everyone gets really <laughs> heated and super toxic. <laughs> and it's a great time. Like, why good, aren't you good, putting scrub. the pizza? Like, yeah, like, <laughs> that pizza needs to go in now. Learn to really play. try hardy. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have one rule at 72 Bin Connector, and that's that you can never mention Mace Griffin Bounty Hunter. Oh, oh is it? no. <laughs> yes. Is that a rule? I did it. I, I did don't it. even know anything yes, about that, it. That is a rule. Oh, everyone go check it out. It's um, top 10 favorite game. <laughs> right up there with Bad Rats. Yes. <laughs> so Mario Kart's fucking awesome. What uh, what the Switch is great at is um, you can hook four controllers to a Switch. By four controllers, I mean you know, the, Joy- the Joy-Con breaks in two. Mm. So you each get a Mario Kart controller or a Bomb Rank controller. So you've instantly got two controllers right off the bat when you buy this thing for mm-hmm. most games. Um Snipper Clips is amazing. I haven't bought it yet, but I uh-huh. need to because I fucking love that game. Um, but uh, with something like Bomberman or uh, Mario Kart, you can actually put two switches in local proximity to each other, like next to each other, uh-huh. um, and they will connect wirelessly. And oh. you can play system linked Mario Kart and or Bomberman just anywhere. Oh. No internet connection, no nothing. They just talk. That's awesome. So you can use both screens. Like yes. the worst thing about the Wii U is that you you had like you were the king and you had like the big thing. But what ended up happening is you like turtle up in your little corner and you're yep. like I I'm playing my game and like everyone else has their game. They're all having a good time, but you're like this like you're like this little sad person <laughs> in the corner. Like you're like oh, I'm a shut in, but I still want to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know? So Bomberman R and and they try they flout this pretty heavily on 
the main menu and any any time you go into versus mode like oh hey you should try eight player bomber man which oh. i can only imagine is the most ridiculous shit anyone's ever seen oh i'm sure um as much shit as i give Bomberman R, it is a Bomberman game the um the update did fix a lot of the control issues i had with it originally it's not great. I wouldn't ever pay full price for this, but if you find it in a bargain bin for like 15 bucks and you mm-hmm. want a, a great, you know, uh, couch non-co-op game, you know, couch versus game, yeah. uh, definitely pick it up because it's, it's Bomberman. Um, and, and then, of course, I picked up the, uh, you know, the new Zelda game, Breath of the Wild, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, even uh, the thing I everyone compares it to is Skyrim, but even Skyrim mm-hmm. felt like a series of waypoints. In yeah, yeah, I, I would get off my you know dotted line and go uh, run around in some caves and kill some skeletons because mm-hmm. that's the only enemy in Skyrim. Um, I, I joke. I know <laughs> yeah, people yell at me dra- for that. Draugr, or Draugr, <laughs> whatever you <Yeah>. say. It. <laughs> uh, but Breath of the Wild is really the first game in a very long time to make me feel like holy shit this is a fucking adventure yeah um one of the first objectives you get is oh go kill the final boss oh but you can't can you like that's your objective it says defeat ganon in big letters across the screen you've got three Easy. hearts you literally i was fighting my way through to this area with a fucking tree branch right <laughs> that's I've got shit I've got jack shit for, for health, for abilities, for mm-hmm. anything. And it says defeat Gan. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> how, no. to, how to draw Do an owl. F- draw some circles. <laughs> Step two, draw the rest of the owl. <laughs> do they force you to it. do the to do the boss? Like the, do they force you to do the final boss and lose? Is it supposed to lose? Because I no. love those. I absolutely love the supposed to lose fights. Like yeah. I don't know if you've um like the beginning of breath of fire 2 like mm-hmm. absolutely awesome like, like i'm gonna beat this guy You're like oh i guess not and you just get <laughs> shit on yeah that's fantastic i love those what was it the end of one of the yeah. halo games was like that was it halo reach was yeah to lose? i thought that was really because effective too it mirrored the book perfectly where mm-hmm. you were the last spartan and you die on the hill mm-hmm. it's oh god reach was good <laughs> um, reach was good but uh yeah it's it's good they don't make you fight ganon right away you can see him Mm -hmm. because he's running around the castle you know tearing shit up um (laughs) but it's like even some of the characters in there they said look you're totally ill-equipped to save zelda to defeat ganon Uh (laughs) you're gonna get your ass handed to you go forth and here are these rough objectives. We're not going to tell you how to get there. You're not going to get the little dotted line on your map to follow. We're going to say, hey, it's over here. You don't even know what the topography looks like. This is the one thing that I, in all of my you know, small amounts of playing Breath of the Wild, I never really understood. Uh, but until you climb a tower in an area, you don't even get like topography outlines of the map. So you don't know where rivers are. You don't know where mountains are. The game just says, go in this corner. Mm-hmm. There's something you need over here somewhere. And I go over there and there's a fucking mountain. I'm like, what the shit? Okay, I guess I'll follow this river. Oh, now I'm totally in a different direction. Mm-hmm. I should find a tower, which is totally in another direction. It's... <laughs> The so, whole game is about traversal. So does the towers work like in Far Cry and all the Far Cry games where you climb a tower or um, I guess for more of a, a more current one, um, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, like when you climb the big long neck dinosaurs, does it work a lot like that? or uh, Where it gives you kind of objectives in your right. general area. And it shows uh, the map. Yeah, it does show the map. Um, there's... Some things that'll show up, like names of uh, like proper places, you know, such and such mountain, such and such lake. Um, right. Here's a little town over here, kind of stuff. Mm. It does that, uh, but as far as like hardcore objectives, um, it might. I turned on the pro HUD as soon as I got the game. So this <laughs> nice. is I I fucking love Breath of the Wild, and I wish more games would do this. I wanted to play this as the most badass adventure game I've ever played. So you, by default, you get stuff like uh, your temperature gauge and, uh, you know, like a thing that lets you detect shrines and a mini map that you can follow. The pro mode gets, gives you heart counter in the corner. And that's it. That's what you Sick. get. That's awesome. So, yeah, it, it might show objectives. I, I don't know, though. Oh, right, right. Interesting. Interesting. I was just curious about the, I tried to get a picture because I, I haven't played it and I, I'm really tempted to get a, uh, a switch. The only thing I've been playing on like a Wii U is, uh, 
Mario Maker. Uh, do you have that on on the Switch as well? I don't. Is it available for the Switch? I don't know. It's a it's absolutely amazing game though. And <laughs> watching if you've watched any like streams of people doing it, I it's it's a really really good time. I think that the only streams I watch outside of Rocket League are Counter Strike and Mario Maker nice. because they're that good. Some of, I've seen insane. some of the the runs and the levels people build are just absolutely insane. Oh yeah, just, there's actually like separate people that are well known in Mario Maker for making insane levels, and people that are well known for completing insane levels. And like, <laughs> that, those are the two dynamics that exist. Like in in like a Counter Strike or like a, or like you're like, oh this guy's really good at Counter Strike. Okay, great. Like and uh, oh this guy he's really good at Rocket League. Okay, great. You know when you have that, that's great. But this is like a guy that's really good at making maps. And it's a unique thing that yeah. exists. I, I like that. I like, like oh, this is a this guy yeah. level. You know, there's a whole separate world in there. Like, I've cooked so up would, a masterpiece. All right, boys, right, send it to the exactly, runners. Exactly. Watch him squirm at this. <laughs> Watch him squirm. <laughs> when, uh, if, if Mario Maker is not yet available, and I don't think it is, but it, it might be, as soon as I find out that it's available, I will buy it instantaneously. To, yes. it's, it's an instant buy. <laughs> they they made so many interesting things. They do. There's a there's a team. There's two guys of a maker and a player. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were and they were doing these really great runs where they're for charity. And the guy would make this insane level and basically bet the other person that he can't finish it. And then the whatever they, whoever wins the money goes to that particular charity. So nice. it was really it was really cool way of doing it. But it was just really intense because the guy had three days to beat it. <laughs> it was That's that awesome. crazy. It was insane. Um, but yeah, I, I can definitely say um, from what I've seen so far, and I'm probably uh, four hours into Breath of the Wild, five hours in, so not not very long. But from everything I've seen, it's an absolutely amazing game. Uh, hmm. All of the scores, those weren't overinflated. That wasn't hype. This is kind of a fundamental shift in the way Zelda games are made and possibly action adventure games are made. Uh, it, it definitely respects the player. Um, it says, Hey, you should go over here. No, we're not going to give you any information. Um, and I, I apologize. A rabbit is running to and fro <laughs> for some reason because Bunnies. she really likes Zelda. Um, but it, it doesn't tell you how you're supposed to get there. It doesn't say, oh, by the way, don't hold that metal storm in a light or don't hold that uh, metal sword in a lightning storm because you're going to get your ass cooked. But you know what happens to get your fucking ass cooked? And then, you know, <laughs> then, you know, uh, also the difficulty. This isn't like other Zelda games where you walk up and you can take 90 hits before you fall over. These guys will kick your ass. Awesome. Any enemy that is like blue or dark colored, I stay far away from because they literally one shot me most of the time. <laughs> nice. So uh, I'm glad to hear that both you and Eric are loving Breath of the Wild and it's, it's getting so excellent good. reviews. It's just it's so good. They really knocked it out of the park, it seems like. Um, yeah, they, they absolutely did. So, Adam. Yes. You already talked about some Monument Valley. But there's yes. there's actually a, a certain game that I really, really want to hear about from you. So yes. tell us, what have you been playing this week? All right. I'm going to get the easy ones out of the way. Rocket League, as always. <laughs> um, I finally made it to champion in uh, 2v2. So Woo! Oh. locked in for those season rewards. Finally, it's taken me long enough, well but done, finally Adam. did it. <laughs> uh, played some Battlegrounds, which... I played some with our our lovely friend Flying Soggy Noodle and he just went on a tear. We ended up winning the match. <laughs> he got the uh the AWM sniper rifle out of a crate. We actually like rushed a couple of crates. So he had that and it was silenced and he had an 8 time scope for it. So <laughs> that guy got 9 kills that round. That's insane. It was That's it was, absolutely, it was absolutely it was nutty. <laughs> And um, we got we got to the final bit. I died, of course, and he finished the last guy off, and we won. So it was a hard carry nice. for sure. I think I had like one kill. <laughs> but uh, well, I no, mean, it was a lot I mean, of fun. I mean, Noodle's been playing shooters for mm. a long time, mm-hmm. and he, that's his primary Is game it? type. Nice. And he just shreds in those. So. It definitely shows. He's been playing a lot of. Uh, <laughs> He's been playing a lot of battle, battlegrounds too. So yes, it's been our, great. Our I mean, official battle battlegrounds team name is Battle Dads. 
So <laughs> yes, just so you know, if you would like no, to join no. the battle dads, you can send in your applications now to <laughs> 72 pin connector.com. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've got a, a question about battlegrounds yeah. because I, everyone at work is playing this and I yeah. really want to, I, God damn it. I need my rig. Um, yeah. but, uh, it does battlegrounds have the cool thing that happens in counter strike where you're the last person alive in your squad and it's clutch or kick either you <laughs> win the whole game it doesn't matter what odds you're up against yeah. you either win the whole game or you get kicked from the server um, no you no. cannot kick you cannot kick in that damn. game damn <laughs> no but you can isolate and cease to speak to your friends over it if you want that's always a reasonable you can always start a new discord <laughs> server and not invite them i am waiting for a shooter to come out with clutch or kick as an in-game mechanic yes like, that would be good, the last right. person on your team and says hey clutch or kick yeah and then it just kicks <laughs> the you. game the game automatically kicks you and, yeah. you <laughs> it kicks you and uninstalls <laughs> that's <laughs> perfect that would be that would be next level fourth wall breaking <laughs> game that, stuff Brian? We're, we're, we 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 got to do this let's let's build yes. this game <laughs> we're doing it <laughs> we're, we're going to build the game <laughs> but no having a lot of fun with battlegrounds as normal um it's nice to for a game to be good enough that i keep playing it and not just rocket league so if yeah. if there are times where i'm like i could play rocket league but i'm going to play some battlegrounds that sounds fun that's always a good thing mm-hmm. so um but you know monument valley play a little bit of that seven levels in it's great we already talked about that the other game I played was a game we, we talked about a little bit in the news last week. Scanner Sombre. Tell me all about this. Which comes <laughs> from the Prison Architect developer. Uh, my, f- my first impression of this game when I started it was bad. And that's because oh, wow. my controller was plugged in and the controller support for that game doesn't work. And my dude was constantly spinning around and I couldn't do anything about it. Jesus. Okay. So initially, my first impression was like, oh God, this is going to be a buggy mess. This isn't going to be good. So I unplugged the controller. It was fine. Um, not a lot of in-game op- like options for graphics and stuff. It's high, medium, low. There's not, you know, whatever anisotropic filtering and anti-aliasing settings and stuff. It's pretty simple. Uh, game performance was not amazing. Uh, when, when you get to certain parts where you're scanning a lot and there's a lot of dots on the screen, sometimes it gets the frame rate drops a little bit. Um, but could you explain the gameplay? Yes. Uh, so okay. you wake up in this cave. It's completely pitch black. You're in your tent or whatever. You walk outside the cave. You can't see anything at all. It's, it's 100% dark except for this little thing that's probably 20 feet away. And mm-hmm. you walk up to it and it's the scanner sitting on a rock. And the scanner is your your only way to see what's going on so you you hold your mouse button or your trigger on your controller if you can get the controller support to work um you hold it down and it scans and it sets these little dots these little lights and these lights attach to surfaces and that's how you kind of see things oh it's lidar so so you're doing you're basically emulating you're the computer and this is a lidar environment that's, that's exactly yeah, that's, it's a lidar that's scanner that's literally that's, my job okay <laughs> nice. so you have a lidar scanner and you already know what i'm talking about now and um so you don't want to play this game at all because it's like going to work every day yeah <laughs> no that, that's like the best part of it that's okay. like the, that's the that's the fun stuff of so you, uh, like so lidar this, is amazing yeah it's it's cool so you have the scanner um it's beautiful i mean it's really cool looking it's it's a unique aesthetic in the game uh the atmosphere is cool you're going through these caves, you scan it as you go. You can scan as much or as little as you want, really. You know, you can scan just enough to kind of tell where you need to go, or you can just sit there and scan it forever, and the dots build up and build up and become a little more detailed as it goes. Um, and you're just exploring this cave with the scanner and walking around and trying to figure out, you know, what what it is, and you as a player are trying to figure out why are you there, you know, oh. all of that kind of stuff. Um it's very much a walking simulator, which I hate that term, but that's the kind of game it is. Your only interaction <laughs> cool with though. the world is the scanner. Oh. So you're scanning and you're walking around and every once in a while you'll get a little, uh, it'll show some text on the screen of what your player is thinking. There's no like dialogue. Um, that's cool. Every once in a while it, it pops up and you read it. Um, it as sounds a lot like uh, Unfinished Swan. I'm not familiar with that. Unfinished Swan is a game where you you show up in a totally white room and mm. you shoot and you shoot paint 
Oh, and nice. every time the paint hits hits something, it paints it. Nice. So, so oh, that, that's right. how you navigate the environment. And there's like okay. there's like puzzles with like um, a whole bunch of different like like little little simple, really simple physics puzzles you can kind of move around in. You okay. should give it a shot. It's actually a good time. Yeah, it's look a into little that. dry because yeah. it is a walking simulator, yeah. Yeah. as we like. <laughs> yeah, Aaron Signal was was comparing uh, Scanner Sombra to that game. I had never heard of it before. Mm-hmm. Now. Oh yeah, it's a it's a good time. It it came out on the uh, I I my first experience on it, it was it on the PS3. That's when I played it, and it's a good time. If you have a PS4 and you have um, PlayStation Now, it's free on that. Nice. So uh, the PlayStation Now feature is quite cool. So jump in there, give it a shot. Tell me if it's as it, it's fun and it's like it's I can't sp- sink like eight hours into it, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look into that for sure. So apparently, it's not a super novel concept for a game, but uh, <laughs> it is. It is. It really uh, is. But um, I I liked the game a lot. I really did. I enjoyed the trying to figure out what was going on. I enjoyed the story for what it was. It wasn't a super in depth narrative. Um. The atmosphere got kind of creepy at parts. Like, oh, I don't want to nice. say it's really? a horror game at all, but there were some, there was like one jump scare, maybe two. Uh, you start to see these glitches on the scanner that are not environmental. So that's part of the, the creepiness of it. Um, it's very much a pretent- already pretentious indie game walking simulator thing that's if great you're not, if you're not into walking around and exploring <laughs> stuff you're not really gonna like the game it doesn't have a deep enough narrative for people that like story games to and hate walking simulators to enjoy it you know what i mean <laughs> um but it is a short game uh, steam says two hours i finished it wow Dang. so you know is, it's is ten there any chance for replay value or anything no. like that or nope Single oh. narrative. I mean, you could go through it again if you wanted to, if you like walking around, scanning the cave and looking at it, because it's pretty to look at. I mean, the sound is you, good too. It's so cool. It actually, looking at screenshots, it's so cool because mm. this is literally a lidar environment, and yeah. it's and this actually brings up a really interesting thing. Mm-hmm. Um, going into lidar, and that is e- Euclidean. Euclidean uh, is a company that did that was trying to make point clouds for games and mm-hmm. they use pop in graphics in order to make photorealistic game environments with yeah. no polygons okay so they eliminated oh. and it, it's amazing and they did it it works so you can go in and you can walk through these environments and you can see it from space like a google earth view and you can zoom all the way into like a grain of sand and you could look at that grain of sand and zoom Whoa. all the way back out and see it and so if you look at like how trees interact with their portions of like the dirt mm-hmm. you don't have those hard rigid lines you have nice smooth proportions and you have no limitation on your polygon count hmm. so you can go Jesus. And, That's nuts. and like right because one of the one of the big handcuffing features uh, uh concepts of of being an artist for a video game is you have a polygon limit you can only go so deep. Mm-hmm. But with this, you totally take the shackles off. You can go into mud box and get in there and, and carve out like the threads on like a, a piece of bark if you wanted <laughs> to. And, <laughs> and those will come through perfectly. Hmm. It's interesting. So to 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 bring the gaming the LIDAR concept into a gaming world mm-hmm. using the scanner sombre is actually kind of interesting because you're mm-hmm. you're saying, hey, by the way, this sort of thing actually exists and it may influence your future gaming. So nice. with this, the first thing I thought when I saw Scanner Sombre was, oh my God, they're going to release this on the Vive. Like ASAP. Oh, the Vive, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean it it just it fits, right? You've got mm-hmm. a relatively gun shaped object like yeah. the Vive controller. Uh-huh. Um and you've got an absolutely glorious, beautiful environment that you can immerse the player in. Yes. Uh and something that may or may not be very scary or disconnecting or immersive to the player. Right. This has got VR written all over it. It does. It really does. Right. From playing it, it absolutely would be a good VR experience. In fact, in the game, the LiDAR scanner, you know, gun shaped thing, he's there's a headset. You're wearing a headset to see the lights for that you scan oh. with the gun. So this is it's the, one up. Your character in the game is wearing a headset already. It would just be completely accurate and perfect for VR. 
and given that most VR games are tech demos for <laughs> glorified tech demos in the first place for ten dollars, two yeah. hour walking simulator <laughs> with cool graphics and a, a neat little story and cool atmosphere it would be perfect <laughs> yeah that sounds and it doesn't have it right now which is actually right. quite interesting yeah so that would be cool if they were to do that but um overall i really like the game um i enjoyed the two hours it was some people might have a problem with that it's what on sale for 10 or 11 bucks so mm-hmm. that might be kind of expensive for some people for a two-hour game like this um i kind of look at it and this is a whole conversation in itself but <laughs> you know price per gameplay hour d- for per decent gameplay hour you know if you compare to going to the theater to see a movie you know if it mm-hmm. was a pretty good movie you liked the movie you felt like you got your money's worth that's how this felt you know 10 bucks for a two-hour game is a lot in the gaming world but if you really look at the time you spent on it and how much you enjoyed it, I think it's worth it for me anyway. I right. wish, I really wish, and I, I don't want to delve too far into this because I have a feeling this is going to be a podcast topic at some point. But I really wish the um, gaming community at large could get away from the, you know, hours per dollar mindset. Because we, <laughs> we, don't, we don't look at roughly anything like that when, mm-hmm. when people say you know oh i love that movie it was a great movie movie tickets are fairly static right you're mm-hmm. going to be paying you know anywhere from 12 to 18 dollars to go to a movie mm-hmm. and sometimes the movie's going to be shit sometimes it's going to mm-hmm. be great sometimes right. it's going to be okay mm-hmm. but people don't say oh well that wasn't worth my 12 dollars because it didn't do x and y for me and i didn't get <laughs> this precise number of enjoyable moments or or smiling at the end yeah mm-hmm. uh, right you can go to an absolutely tragic, heart-wrenching, the saddest movie in the world where they're just kicking puppies over and over again. But if it makes you feel something and you wanted to feel really horrible about the world, you probably got your money's worth. Uh, Enjoyment is not quantitative. There is no, not yet anyway, Mm -hmm. there's no number (laughs) we can assign to how good something is. Because some people really love Mace Griffin Bounty Hunter. Um, they're wrong. <laughs> but some I don't people know, that's don't. true. Uh, maybe if someone was like, I don't know, shackled in a cave and that was all that they can play <laughs> and to escape the tragedy that is their no, life. No, that's, that's the torture. That's the torture. They go <laughs> back right to the there. regular cave torture after playing that game. <gasps> oh, man. But yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Good. Um, I would recommend it for sure. If you're not at hours per dollar guy <laughs> <laughs> or if um, you are and that adds up perfectly yeah <laughs> either one either yeah. one recommend yeah, absolutely <laughs> but uh that's about all i've been playing um if you guys are done with your games for the week uh we can move on to a little bit of new stuff we don't have a whole lot i but, can't hear you over the sound of my nintendo Switch. oh god yeah oh god. if you're playing the 72 pc drinking game take a drink tom <laughs> tom said something good and or bad about nintendo Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Um, Tom had strong opinions about Nintendo in some way. Dark Souls. Um, yeah, Dark food. Souls, Rocket League. <laughs> food. We love food. You have to mention food. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we need an actual, like, official drinking game list. Yeah, we'll make a spreadsheet someday. <laughs> yeah. But uh, on to the news a little bit. Uh, I don't want to go too crazy with the news because we're already an hour into the podcast. But uh, Prey is released. Prey was getting a lot of hype, and it seems to be doing pretty well. Um, According to Metacritic.com, we've got a user score of 8 out of 10. Uh, A lot of the reviews on various gaming reviews websites have been solid. So it's looking pretty good. Um, Prey comes from... uh, Published by Bethesda. Um, What is the game company? Arcane Studios. I'm not really familiar with them. I um, actually don't know. I thought I had something, but I didn't. Right. I was thinking of Rocksteady with uh, <laughs> Arkham, but that's totally <laughs> oh, not God. the right people. No, no, They're no. not related in any way. No, but uh, I haven't heard of the studio, but it's apparently it's getting pretty good reviews. It's something you uh, you wake up on the space station or being the moon future and you're some sort of test subject for something that's going to change humanity forever. And obviously... With any video game plot, things go horribly wrong, and there's <laughs> aliens everywhere, and it looks it's clearly pretty cool. One hundred percent related to the previous game, <laughs> and it isn't just a cash in on a name of a game that was. 
I wouldn't <laughs> even say successful, yeah. but it was well rated for the time. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, didn't, I don't know anything about the old prey, but I think we've talked about this before, that this one has nothing to do with that. It's just a similar name. Uh, um, Dark Soul Invader in, in Twitch chat mm-hmm. says, uh, Arcane did Dishonored. So, oh, okay. Yes, that's where, that's where their name is. That actually makes sense, because I was watching some gameplay of Prey, and the character models were that, like, everybody is kind of wide, <laughs> like, character models <laughs> that you see in Dishonored games. So that makes a lot I, of I sense. I love how you can tell who <laughs> built a game or what engine they built it with, depending on what the character models look like. Yeah. It's just like, are they kind of stiff and look like they would look great in like a game from 2004? Oh, it's a source engine. Yeah. Okay, got it. it. Kind, of, <laughs> kind, of, kind of looks like you're watching a widescreen movie on a standard TV before widescreen yeah. TVs were as popular as they are. <laughs> but um, yeah, it seems to be cool. I was looking at some of the reviews and I noticed one. it was something about the enemy, the mimic. And it's this uh, little alien thing that can turn into any of the objects in the room that you're in. So you lose sight of it and you might be thinking, oh, was that cup there a minute ago? Or is that banana that's, on the table actually the enemy that's about to ambush me when I'm not paying attention? That's it's fucking insane. unsettling. It's a cool concept. Yeah. It's kind of like the thing. John, or John Comfort is the thing, you know. I think that's kind of cool. That's really unsettling. Very interesting that's mechanic. Awesome. I would it's, love to see a multiplayer game do that. Yeah. Oh, it's like kinda, a... Kind of um, like Snake oh. with, with the box, but yeah. you can be anything. There's a Gary's Mod game like that, I think. Somebody was telling me about it at work one day. Hmm. That but, could um, be cool. It's called yeah. The Hunted. The Hunted? The Hunted, I think. Uh, I just kind of trying to put it back in my brain. Yeah, The Hunted, I think, is what it's called. And it was... Uh, everyone is the SWAT team and you are the, uh, and you're like this, uh, essentially like predator and okay. you just go around kn- knifing people. <laughs> it's, it's really good. And, nice. uh, there's a bunch of really funny, uh, videos, uh, of people playing that and like, cause you, you know, voice chats enabled. So you can like say really creepy things like, right behind you. <laughs> so, like, uh, <laughs> it's good times. It reminds me of a guy that I was playing counter strike 1.6 back in the day. Um, nice. where he would, he would start to make like the jaws music mm-hmm. and he would, he would get like to the crescendo and it was perfectly, he did this like 10 times in our match <laughs> and he would get perfect. And then he'd kill someone like he'd knife That's them great. or use a pistol <laughs> or, or use a, an AK or something, but it was always right. Perfect. Where the jaws music was. That's it was so good. Oh my God. It was wonderful. I hated it. He was on the other team. I got killed <laughs> so many times. <sighs> Nice. That's fantastic. But yeah, Prey, Prey is out. It's getting decent reviews. If you're into action-y, sci-fi, adventure, slightly scary games, give it a check. Check it out for sure. Um, another game released recently um, that's getting a lot of hype as well. Uh, Josh, you want to tell us a little bit about Outlast 2? Right. Outlast 2 is actually... It it, it kind of snuck up on us. It was, uh, it was on... It was released around April 25th, actually. Mm-hmm. So it's not as new as I thought. Um, yeah. But the interesting thing I've been hearing about it now, I haven't, I haven't jumped on that and played that yet. I know mm-hmm. I played the first one, and <laughs> I'm not good with scary games. Yeah. I'm going to toss that right out there. Um, so, like, it was fantastic. It was beautiful. The first one was mm-hmm. good. But right now, my character is left hiding under a bed, and I turned it off and haven't touched it <laughs> since. <laughs> I'm sure he's very safe still under there. He's safe. He's fine. He's there. <laughs> nothing can touch him there because the, the game's off. If I don't play it, nothing scary will happen. And so it's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but an interesting note about that is that on this one, there was um, quite a big difficulty spike for mm. Atlas 2 that I've been hearing really? about. And people were beating their heads against the wall, trying to get through certain areas. And then it kind of took the fear aspect out of it. Yeah. So recently they just, they just announced that LS two is getting in. They're going to be dialing back the difficulty. They're going to, uh, as the, uh, the article says here, they're going, uh, they're going for more of an experience than a challenge. And that's mm-hmm. something that you could talk about for sure. Mm-hmm. Should a horror game be challenging or should it just be the experience? Should it just be the um, ride? It depends on what you want to go for. Mm-hmm. Like if, if you're trying to do like, let's say they did a dark souls esque uh, dead space remake. And I don't know why they'd make a remake of a game that, you know, 
it, it, speaking in retro game terms, came out yesterday, right? Yeah, the, right. D- Dead Space is not an old game by any mm-hmm. means, but if you were doing something skill based horror like that, where you actually felt a little scared, um, yeah, I could see challenge being one of the the things you would aim for. Right. Uh, but if it's if it's an experience, kind of like uh, Amnesia or several mm-hmm. of the haunted house games I've I, I've played, mm-hmm. no, probably not. Um, right. It's, and there's definitely a middle ground, right? Silent right. Hill 2 is not an easy game by any means, uh, but if you have to fight, it is challenging. Mm-hmm. Right. That's 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 a big question, really. Um, going in and saying, uh, I feel like Outlast is more of an experience situation. Like, once you go through it, and you've been scared and kind of snuck your way all the way up to this portion, mm-hmm. and then you die, you're like, um, well... I know from my point to that point, there isn't anything. So I'm going to yeah. run to that point and continue yeah. to be scared from that point. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, um, and if you're doing something like a dark souls or something, there's a difference between tension and like the jump scare aspect. Like you right. build yeah, that definitely. tension, you build that tension up to the jump scare, jump scare happens. You release the tension cause you're scared. Mm-hmm. Right. But if you know that there's nothing up to that, there's no tension building. And then mm-hmm. you hit that point and, right you know that jump scare is there, so now it's just annoying, right? right? If you have something like a Dark Souls, for instance, where you're like, you have that tension building because there's something on the line, like your souls, for instance, like, oh, I yeah. just died. I have 100,000 souls sitting like two feet away from me, but there's a guy with a big hammer, yeah. and <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's some sweat happening there, <laughs> yeah. right? So it's a totally different experience. That's why Silent Hill is kind of strange. Silent Hill is different because you're there right? It's, it's not about being scared by someone going, rah, right? Silent Hill is about you existing in that world and you have to exist in that world and it mm-hmm. sits with you and it resonates yeah. with you. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's the existential dread of just absolute, being in the place. Absolutely. Yeah. And in that situation, you can make it difficult, but mm-hmm. like an Outlast and a lot of times Resident Evil's have always been jump scary. So mm-hmm. it, it wears off over time, right? It, yeah. it becomes less scary. I definitely uh, noticed that. Silent Hill, Crimson Butterfly, for instance, was a mm-hmm. fantastic one that was a lot like that, where it kind of like sat with me, where I'm like, oh, oh my God, I'm dealing with this and I have to deal with this. I've shut the console off and I'm still dealing with this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fatal Frame. Fatal Frame right. was, it, it was yeah. all atmosphere. Absolutely. Atmosphere is it. And I feel like your Silent Hill reference was perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, like nothing, nothing scared me more than when I was in Silent Hill three, actually. And I was in a room, and the lights went out, and when they came back on, the walls were meat. I'm like, okay, <laughs> uh, oh, this this could go away for a few months. I'll come yeah. back to it later. <laughs> um, I, I played through the first Outlast. Um, I did notice some of that, where a lot of the game is. Oh no, I'm seen. I'm scared because there's a chase sequence and you got to frantically try to get away and hide somewhere so that you don't get killed or whatever. But right. if if a game like that is too difficult and you do die, dying is the easy way back to the spot where you messed up because it's primarily right. a stealth game. So you get seen, you die. Oh, okay. Well, just try again. <laughs> right. Exactly. And you become yeah. desensitized to that anxiety and that fear of getting caught and having to run away. Right exactly it's the it it happens in stealth games too like yeah exactly what you're telling you bring up stealth and it happens in stealth games where it becomes a tedium you know you're like i have Mm -hmm. to do through i have to go through this so just to think about difficulty in games is definitely a topic that we could go into and um you can talk for hours on that yes (laughs) but anyway we can move on um adam you have some stuff about uh rocket league huh you always have stuff about Rocket League. <laughs> okay, No, this friend. weekend is actually the Rocket League free weekend. So if you haven't yet played it, and if you're listening to this podcast, you chances are you probably played it as much as we've talked about it, or at least looked at it. But it's free this weekend on Steam. So download it. Play it. No. Become addicted like we have. <laughs> hey, hey, we have a trip scheduled. We have yeah. all we are, sorts. Of, we are we are in this full bore as you should be. Join us on the free weekend. Yes. Thank you for Psyonix for sponsoring this, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this podcast. <laughs> Actually, and I noticed today there's another free weekend this weekend too. Uh, Tom Clancy's The Division is apparently free this weekend. Oh, really? Yeah, I, saw, I got the Steam notification when I started up today to play Rocket League. <laughs> 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 but uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's free weekend. Check those two games out. Uh, it's free. You might as well. You might end up buying them and putting thousands of hours into it like I have. You never know. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, other than that, we have some Overwatch stuff. Josh, you're the only one that's played Overwatch. Yes, apparently I have. it's doing pretty well. Right? Yeah, it hit 30 million players, registered players. That is, <laughs> I suppose, if anyone's pirating it, they didn't count them. But, yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, 30 million registered players. That's uh, that's solid. That's a lot, a lot of people. And it, it's, I mean, when when it first came out, I was playing a fair amount of it. Mm-hmm. Um, now I've been playing it maybe like once a month with a right. group of friends. They do their own little. Um, you know, Overwatch thing, but they are really deep into it. So mm-hmm. there's, it's just a really big, fantastic franchise right now. <laughs> yeah, it's cool to see something like that flourishing. Right, um, absolutely. It's getting esports stuff. It's you know, a lot of people are playing it. It's taking people away from Steam apparently. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, well, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, Tom. You have some stuff about uh, some news about Tekken. Yes. Oh. So, uh, so it appears that um, uh, Roger, the fighting boxing kangaroo that has graced our glorious fighting game Tekken, uh, will not be in Tekken Seven. Uh, animal activists have gotten um, <laughs> have gotten the kangaroo removed. Uh, but Kuma the bear gets to stay. Uh, and the quote, <laughs> oh, wow. is, the quote is obviously it is stronger than a human being, so it gets to stay. Uh, <laughs> wow. Are you serious? Have you seen kangaroos and how vicious they are? Oh, yeah. Kangaroos are, are fucking like, oh my god. I they, wouldn't be able to fight a kangaroo. They, no they're way. like, a kangaroo the would most, kick my ass. They're the bodybuilders of the animal world. Like, you do not fuck with a kangaroo. Those guys will fuck you up. <laughs> right. Just take on a Joey or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. I've eaten kangaroo and it is fantastic. Is it now? All right. Yes. Oh, my God. It, it was actually, yeah, it was really good. <laughs> it was expensive, but it was good. But that I'm, sucks. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to butcher this person's name. Uh, but uh, the executive producer of Tekken spoke to VG247, uh, Katsuhiro Harada? Harada? Hmm. Either way. Um, <laughs> Uh, he says uh, there was a video of this uh, of a man's dog being headlocked by a kangaroo, uh, and he punched it in the face, and it turned into a big problem. People were complaining about him punching the kangaroo. It seems that in the last few years, there's a lot more animal activists. Even though they probably wouldn't play our game, they would still hear about that about a kangaroo in our game being punched, and would complain about it. <laughs> That's crazy! Wow, absolutely yeah. insane. The PC Gamer article goes on to say, um, you know, despite the fact that. Uh, he has been featured in the Tekken series since 96. Kuma the Bear will appear in Tekken 7 all the same, as it is obviously stronger than a human being. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. That yeah, sucks. I, I like the kangaroo this, character in Tekken. Tekken's yeah. a lot of fun, and that's a, that's a fun little You know, I, I think there's, there's definitely been some, some real hype... Uh, and, and protectionism around extinct species. So I'm going to go ahead and protest Tekken 3 for including uh, Gon, the dinosaur, uh, oh, because yeah. it is very insensitive to to punch and attack our, our extinct dino brethren. Um, so I'm, I'm now boycotting Tekken 3. Um, <laughs> this, this is just, this whole thing is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, what's even more ridiculous, though, is Sega saying, oh my god, you know what everyone really, really wants right now? <laughs> Another Sonic game. Yeah, nice. Sonic is all the rage these days. Yeah, what the fuck, Sega? What the unholy <laughs> fuck? So, uh, of course, the game is called Sonic Forces, and it's being developed by Sonic Team, which kind of you know absolutely has failed in their duty since <laughs> right 1999. Yeah, um, probably a little bit before that. Uh, but I absolutely shat all over this game. I hated even the very thought of it until I watched the uh, Green Hill Zone um, trailer for this game. And holy shit, it looks like they just took the Sonic Generations 2D engine and are making a game out of it. Hmm. Uh, Now, I've only seen a very little bit of this. I don't know very much about the game, so I could be completely off base. But if this is a Sonic game, that's basically Sonic Generations, just the 2D stages. Yeah, I could see myself picking this up. Uh, Sonic Generations was fucking awesome. It was a great 2D Sonic game. It was beautiful. It had amazing remixed music. Uh, The platforming could have been a little tighter, but it wasn't bad by any Mm -hmm. means. Um, If this game ends up being that, yeah, I could go for it. Uh, So, Sega, 
you're on notice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might pick this up. I might make fun of you in a couple weeks. We'll have to see. But you almost definitely will pick up Sonic Mania when it comes out for the Switch, won't you? Yeah, probably. Sonic probably. Mania looks great. Oh my God, it just looks awesome. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Um, but yeah, I think that's all the news I had. Um, do you guys have anything else? No, I don't think so. I think we're pretty much tapped for the week. Um, but you can check out our podcast next week, every Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we cast this on twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. Um, if you want to tweet at us, you can tweet at us at 72 PC podcast on Twitter. Uh, let us know if you like us or hate us or if you have any <laughs> ideas or something you want to talk, you want us to talk about. And of course we have a website, 72 pin connector.com. You can listen to all the, all the, the podcasts and hear Tom talk about the Nintendo switch over and over and over and over <laughs> and over as he's showing on his nice webcam here. <laughs> My precious. <laughs> My oh life. god this is getting My inappropriate <laughs> but anyways that's about all we have for you so thanks for listening and until next week game on see you everyone take care guys bye, bye.